What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and on this 12th episode of the Separation of Concerns and Apex Comment Tutorial Series, we're gonna go over the Builder Pattern. All right guys, so today in this 12th episode of the Separation of Concerns and Apex Comment Tutorial Series, we're going to go over the builder pattern, what it is, why you might use it, and how it fits into this whole conversation of separation of concerns in the Apex Common Library. So, um, what is the builder pattern? Uh, the builder pattern is a creational design pattern. Uh, if you don't know what a creational design pattern is, I'll put a link in the description so that you can go you know, get a little bit more information about that. Um, but it allows you basically to to build complex objects one at a time or one, one piece or part or step or whatever at a time so the uh, the example that I like to give which we will build out here in just a little bit is the is building a computer right you're building a desktop computer um, when you build that, there's lots of different pieces that you could select, right? And, you know, depending on what you're building, you could have a dozen plus parts. And it could be in a bunch of different variations. So say, for instance, you've got a website where customers pick out pieces for their computer. Um, you know, you've got a few options. Uh, the two most common ones, I guess, would be whenever they've picked out the pieces to their computer, they could hit like the enter button or something or build computer button, I don't know. Some theoretical button that then goes and um, calls a constructor for a computer class that then constructs a computer. It's not a good option, I'll show you why in a bit. Or you could use something like the builder pattern where each time they select something, it uses the builder pattern to add a new part to that computer which is a little a little easier to uh, deal with in my opinion but we'll go over that in a second um, as far as why the builder pattern is useful um, it's useful because it will um, do two things number one it will reduce your overall code uh, mostly because of what's referred to as telescoping tele telescoping constructors I think that's how you pronounce that tell us whatever you'll see in a second I, I I don't know it's a whatever anyway so it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna reduce the amount of code that you have the um, uh, other thing that it'll allow you to do is make your code a little bit more flexible um, than you would maybe get stuck with otherwise if you didn't use the builder pattern um, so and uh, the last thing, I guess, is, uh, right, how does it fit into separation of concerns? Before we get into a, a quick example, um, how does it fit into separation of concerns in the Apex Common Library? Well, it fits into the Apex Common Library because of this uh, FFLib query factory class, right? And <clears throat> this class is used heavily by the FFLib S object selector class but basically which I'm not going to show you an example just yet um, but when we get into the selector how to implement the selector layer using apex common I will uh, show you you know how this FFlib query factory comes into play I guess it's used very heavily in it um, so, uh, and this class uses the factory pattern quite a lot, right? You can kind of see that if you run through the methods and you can see that the methods all return an instance of this class, right? So, um, as far as separation of concerns, again, you know, it's not necessarily directly associated with it, but it will reduce your code it will separate out um, a bit your different concerns in this class right it's going to allow you to set different portions 
in different places as opposed to setting everything in one big constructor. So you get a lot more control over each piece of the thing that you're building. Um, but yeah, uh, let's just go over this example. I don't want to take too much time on it because the series is very long. Um, but I have built out an example of what this would look like in the um, wiki that I've put together, which you should definitely go check out. Um, it's just in this GitHub repo. I've got a wiki that goes over all of these concepts very in-depth. But let's just go over this. So if we were building a computer, right, and we were building this computer without a... Um, without using the, the builder pattern, uh, basically what we'd end up doing is calling a bunch of constructors to build out a computer uh, for us. So you can see in this public computer creator class um, that I've just got a bunch of different constructors in here that allow me to create computers with a variety of different things so if we actually let me just grab this and explain this more in IntelliJ so if we created this new class <clears throat> called uh, whatever I called it computer creator it doesn't think I have comp GPU but whatever it is what it is so l let's just take a look at this if I wanted to uh, basically set up a bunch of different variants of computers using this non builder class setup uh, I have two options uh, the first one is what I've got set up here right where basically I allow people to send in all, I force people really to send in all of the different computer parts, even if they're null, right? So um, this, um, this isn't really ideal, right? If I'm forcing people to send in every single part for their computer, even if they don't want speakers on their desktop, that's not super great and it will result in a bunch of calls to this computer creator class that have nulls. Not to mention, right, if I wanted now, say, say I've got 10 different um, places that are calling this computer creator class and, and, and constructing it like this. Well, what happens now if I decide I want to add, um, I don't know, I we'll say a Wi-Fi card or something. I don't know, well, I've got Wi-Fi card, but whatever, you get it. I wanna add a new piece. So we'll say new uh, computer part comp part, right? Now, because I've only got this one constructor, I've gotta go back and update everywhere that is using this um, to use the new, or to add the, this new parameter computer part right I have to pass in null here or maybe I'll pass in another computer part whatever else the only other option that I have here if I didn't want to force them to put in every single thing every single time is to copy this constructor and make it so that I had different variants for every single one right and you could have you know potentially hundreds of these depending on the different pieces for your complex object that you're building right I could have one where I just pass in the motherboard because all they wanted to do is buy a motherboard or maybe motherboard and fan or maybe fan and network card or whatever else right so um, you can see how the telescoping constructor um, that's how I'm supposed to say it. Why, why did I have such a difficult time earlier? No, anyway, the telescoping constructor <laughs> situation can get out of, out of hand. You could have hundreds of these constructors that just, you know, go over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Not ideal, 
horrible situation uh, to get yourself into. It can get really unruly really, really fast. So the other option that you have is to use what's called the builder pattern. So if we use the builder pattern for the computer creator class instead of this whole constructor methodology here, let's see what would happen instead. So um, we've got now this computer creator class, but instead it's using the builder pattern where if we want to set a CPU for our, our computer, we set the selected CPU and return this. We set the, the GPU for it and then we return the computer creator, etc., etc., all the way down. Now, I must not, well, comp speakers, it doesn't matter. Um, not super important that I get this to actually work, I don't think. Oh, I am very, no, it's because it's of type speaker instead of speakers. Okay, so um, anyway, now what I would do if I was calling this class from somewhere else is something like this. I would say, you know, public void uh, create computer. And instead of uh, basically, you know, constructing it with one of those huge constructors that we just looked at. Instead, what we'd end up doing is say, new computer creator dot set CPU, and then I'd pass it in a CPU, so it'd be like new CPU and what whatever else I needed in there. Obviously, these classes aren't real at the moment. I just did this really quick as an example. But then you'd say, you know, after that, set fan, etc. And if that's all I wanted to set, right, um, then that's all I'd need to set. I don't have to have a bunch of telescoping constructors over and over again. Um, and uh, you can see how that can drastically reduce your code and simplify things a bit, uh, quite a, quite a bit. So you can have these complex option or objects that you build one piece at a time, and they have these small methods that allow you to set each piece of the object, right? Um, <clears throat> and then when you're done, you know, you return that to the customer. So you could imagine, right? maybe in a controller class for a lightning web component or something you have a computer creator variable and maybe at some point uh, a user gets to select a cpu for their computer you'd set the cpu maybe at some point they set the fan you'd set the fan on the computer creator on and on and on so extremely simplified code in comparison to the other one where we could just get crazy out of hand right um, so yeah builder pattern super useful uh, if you want more information on the builder pattern how it works any of that kind of stuff uh, definitely head over to this wiki here that I've put together um, there's some useful links there's a lot more information probably and i'll link a couple videos that i like that talk about the um builder pattern that you can take a look at too if you want more information about it past the you know quick introduction to it that i've done in this video all right guys um hopefully that has helped a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I never know if they do, but I hope they do. Um, and uh, in the next episode, we're actually going to start on uh, going through the selector layer. So episode 13, we're going to look at the selector layer. And episode 14, we'll go over how to implement it with the Apex Common Library. So uh, stick around, and we'll do all those fun things too. All right, uh, that is it. I will talk to you guys later.